Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Well, I hope you're ready to get into God's Word here this morning. Yeah. I've, got a, uh, I've got a special lesson for Christmas planned out here for us today. And uh, before, I go, before I get into that, I, I just want to recognize what an incredible service we've had so far. I mean, uh, the singing has been phenomenal. It's been incredible. Uh, the two regions, ushers, have worked together in harmony. The kids' kingdom workers have worked together in harmony. And the whole thing has just come together in a fantastic way. I couldn't have asked for anything more than everyone. Thank you very much. Yeah. Now, I also want to recognize, you know, today is our Mercy Toy Drive. Yeah. And here's all the presents we drive. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, it's, it's in a very serious way. That display in the back is the most cranking display of presents I've ever seen in 23 years. That was phenomenal. I know the call was to have one present for every disciple, and we've got way more than that. Uh, I can't wait to see the kids that benefit from your generosity today. Thank you so much for all the presents. Give yourselves a round of applause for them. That's awesome. As we get on into the lesson here, you're going to need to get a whole lot more fired up because we're going to talk about something incredible today. The title of my lesson is The World's Greatest Gifts. What's on your Christmas list? Have you been naughty or have you been nice? That could be a loaded question, couldn't it? I want you to think for a moment of all the Christmas presents that you've received in your lifetime. Which of them has been the greatest? Oh, wow. <laughs> and I, I want to pose one question to you here today that I want you to reflect upon. How do you ask God for what you want? How are you going about that in your daily life? Today, I'd like you to focus on that. The manner in which you ask, what you ask for, how often you ask. Because God gives the world's greatest gifts. Come on, bro. There was a little boy that was asking for his Christmas presents. And he wanted for Christmas a brand new red bike. And so he got down on his knees and he went in and he started praying for this red bike. He said, God, if you give me this brand new red bike, I will be good for three months. You ever had that bargaining prayer with God? But then he thought about it for a minute, and he went, he's a little bit like us, you know. Yeah. Ah, there's no way I'm going to be good for three months straight. <laughs> okay, let me get, God, you give me this red bike, I will be good for three weeks. Oh. That's probably Mason's deadline right there, about three weeks. Yeah. Two and a half. Two and, a half. <laughs> and then he thought about it again. Talk on it, I'm just... I've never made it three weeks. What am I doing? <laughs> and so he goes, God, I will be good for three days if you give me this brand new red bike for Christmas. And then, you know, he got in his bed and he's just thinking about it. And he looked up and he saw a statue of the Virgin Mary. So he walked on over, he grabbed it. and He was reminiscing on the statue and he goes, yep. He stuck it under his purse and he goes, Mom, God, if you ever want to see your mother again, you're going to give me a brand new red bike. Oh, my <laughs> no. <laughs> Surely not. <laughs> wow. You know, it's just a little illustration that we've got to ask God in a right manner for the things that we want in our lives. I've got four points for us today. Our first point be turning to John chapter 16. Amen. Come on, bro. John chapter 16. Right. Our first point today is that you did ask God for a gift. Our second point will come from Luke 11, verses 9 through 10. God gave you a Christmas present. Our third point will come from John 17, verses 6 through 8. Jesus gave you. A Christmas present. And then our final point will come from a culmination of all the scriptures. And our final point 
is that you can give as many gifts, Christmas presents, as you'd like to others. Let's be going to John chapter 16, verse 23. Of course, the setting here is that Jesus is about to die. He's telling the twelve a little bit about what life is going to be like when he goes back to the Father. And I want you to consider, before you were a Christian, before you were a disciple, for those of us who have been baptized, I want you to think about those nights that you cried yourself to sleep. Those nights that you begged God to change your life. In John chapter 16, verse 23, Jesus says, In that day, meaning the day of judgment and after, in that day, you'll no longer ask me for anything. Very truly, I tell you, my Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Until now, you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask, and you will receive your joy, and your joy will be complete. If we can go down on this a little bit. You asked for help so many times in your life. Yes. I asked for help so many times in my life before I found God. And yet I want you to consider, how did you decide this year what presents you were going to buy for the different people in your life? How about for your kids? They gave you a list, right? <laughs> All our kids. Once they can talk, our kids give us a list. <laughs> if it's not a physical list, then they just shoveled it to you one by one at opportune moments. Yeah. Sucker. <laughs> That's how it works, man. The kids are like, my, my kid grabbed me. He's like, I only want two presents this year. And I was like, wow, okay. Brace myself. They're going to be big. <laughs> of course, he wants a car. <laughs> and he wants a GoPro. So, he'll probably get a bike. <laughs> if he's lucky, an electric one, maybe. But you know, as parents, we make the biggest deal about getting our kids what they want. It's like the greatest pain on the planet for our kids to eagerly desire something and we can't give it to them. You know, God doesn't have that problem. God can give us anything that we want. I remember uh, I used to write little notes and leave them around the house for my mom. <laughs> I, I left messages. Uh, you know, I made sure she knew what I wanted. And, and then I remember on Christmas waiting for Santa Claus. So I made cookies with my mom. And, uh, and then we'd, I'd leave the cookies out for him, you know. And uh, my mom always spent time with me doing crafts and arts and stuff during the holidays. It was awesome. And, and yet, I remember staying up all night long. And I was laying in my bed listening for the reindeer. When they were going to trample on the roof. And then, any little noise. I was like, oh, they're here, they're here. Go running out in the living room. Doggone it, they're not here yet. And then every time I'd fall asleep, oh, 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 run in the room. No presents yet. I don't know how she did it, but every Christmas morning, it looked like back there. Just presents everywhere for me. I'm very grateful for my mother. I love you very much. I don't even see you. Where are you at? There she is back there. All right. Amen. But you know, I, I became an expert in how to unwrap the present, peel it up just enough where I could find out what it was and then put it back so nobody knew. And I don't, I don't know how she knew, but she always caught me somehow. I mean, I'd spend, I'd spend minutes making sure that the, the ripped paper lined up perfectly so when I put the tape back so you couldn't see the little rip mark. 
And so, uh, yeah, I love getting my presents. Why? We all do. I love getting presents. Yeah, you know, God loves giving them. He actually does love receiving them. We'll talk about that a little later. And, and yet, I loved what Sierra sung. It was so powerful. I was sitting on the front row, welled up in tears. I've had withdrawals since April about Sierra singing, you know. You're welcome, by the way, from Southland. Thank you. <laughs> Fall on your knees. Yes. Oh, you fell on your knees before you were a disciple. Yes. You fell on your knees for sure. And you were asking God for help. Yes. And yet, he helped you. He was there for you. He answered you. Way bigger than you ever thought. You had no idea what you were getting into, did you? No. <laughs> These guys had been with Jesus... For three years. And the Bible says, and the Bible does not lie, that that entire time, they never asked Jesus for anything in his name. How about it? How, how do you ask for things? Man. See, in his name refines your heart. It refines and purifies your motives. It changes your desires. You can't ask God for something that's going to harm you in his name. You can't ask for something that's selfishly ambitious or only benefits you and harms the world in Jesus' name. And, and yet, when we knew not Christ, God still heard your pleas to be saved. And he gave you a Christmas present. Yeah. See, the things you really want, you ask for in Jesus' name. Contrast it, how you normally ask day to day, or do you even ask, to when somebody's dying. You never leave Jesus' name out when you pray for that. The greatest hardships in your life, the word Jesus flows out of your mouth because you understand already in Jesus' name is what gets it done. All those nights, crying and crying, begging and pleading, you prayed and asked God for the gift of changing your life, and he answered and gave you the greatest Christmas present you ever got. Secondly, what was the present? Go to Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11. What was the present? In verse 9, Jesus says, So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. You say, but I ask all the time, and he doesn't do it. Because it wasn't in Jesus' name. Or he tried to fake him out and did it in Jesus' name, but you didn't have Jesus' heart behind yeah, it. Yeah. True. Come on, bro. He always answers prayers. In Jesus' name. Ask and it will be given you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives. And the one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Here's the thing. God gives to those who ask. And yet we let ourselves get so busy, don't we? We get so busy that we don't even have time to pray. And we forget, we ask people though, right? You need a ride, you call, you, you call somebody, right? <laughs> Especially in the kingdom. Oh, help me out, because I'm a disciple. <laughs> And yet, we don't ask God for so much that we should. I want to help you out tremendously today. 
in a profound way. Say, you ready? If you don't ask God, he's not going to do it for you. It's that simple. It really is that simple. If you want his help, you got to ask for his help. I mean, you cried yourself for years. He didn't answer that right away. Yet yeah, we, we could come to, now I'm a disciple. Where's my answer? Wow. He took years to answer your prayer, to change your life, to become a disciple, to be right with him. And yet we get so upset with him when he doesn't answer us when we want him to answer us now. Yeah. Let's move on to verse 11 here. Chapter 11, verse 11. He says, which of you fathers, and we've got several fathers in the room here, yeah. if your son asks for a fish, we'll give him a snake instead. Or if he asks for an egg, we'll give him a scorpion. If you then, though you are evil. Oh, it was awesome to spend time with Jesus. Find out you're evil and all. <laughs> though you are evil, you know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? See, we know how to give good gifts to our kids. We sacrifice heaven and earth to make things awesome for our kids. And yet... Why don't we think of God that way? That he will not do that for us. Of course he will. Of course he does. If my son asks me for a ride down to a drug dealer to get some drugs, you think I'm going to help him? No. And yet, we're, we can be so out of touch with the wickedness of the desires that we have and what we're asking God for at times. We make it sound so good in the words. But he knows our hearts. And so, but we get so mad that he doesn't answer our prayers that we stop talking to him because of it. We give him the silent treatment. But, you know, for our kids, we don't just want to give them what they want. We want to make it special. We want to make it a surprise. We do all these things. God does all of these things for you as well. The Bible says in Psalm 145, verse 19, he fulfills the desires of those who fear him. He hears their cries and saves them. I, I love what it says right there in verse 13. If then, though you are evil. You know, preachers all over the country would get strung up if they just start telling everybody how evil they are. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Wow. They just get strung up. But I'm going to help you out today. You're evil. Okay? You're evil, and so am I. I can say it because so am I. Right? We have evil thoughts. We get angry. We hold grudges. We, we have bitterness. We have rage. We have selfish ambition. We have all these things going on inside of us, and God still gave us that present to change our life. And right here, he's spiritually trying to get us to understand something that's very important. God does not give you spiritual scorpions. He's trying to make the contrast here of the heart we have for our kids to help us understand God has that heart and more for us. So that we understand when something tough happens, it's not a scorpion. See, I, I fear some of you feel like God punishes you wow. constantly. Like you're just the sole object of God's wrath. Right. <laughs> I just want to help you out. I get plenty of it myself. Okay? I don't know about you. Anybody else get some too? Anybody else get some hardships, some discipline going on in their life? All the rest of you got it easy. So, amen. You don't need the lessons. Don't worry about it. <laughs> But I want to implore you this morning to convince yourself to believe this passage. It's true. Come on, Ron. Come on, Ron. Why? Because it is. That's why. 
Because it is. God does not harm you. He trains you and molds you to change this world. Come on. But when God doesn't give us what we want, when we want, how we want it. Woo, we, can, we get this spiritual disease. I call it the spoiled little brat syndrome. We, everybody gets it. So don't try and act like you don't. Everybody gets it at some point as a disciple. You get really, really, really angry. Almost always stop reading and praying completely. You stop asking him for anything because he doesn't answer my prayers. He's out to get me. You get angry, unrighteous, focusing on your thoughts, your needs, your desires, all the things that you need that aren't there. Instead of what you read in a quiet time. We come to church. We know who you are when you come to church because your face is all distorted. Remember when you were a kid, you did that. In my house, the kids would be like, they just like terrorize. And then I'd spank them and then they'd, ah! and then, no, smile. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and we come into church when we're like this and somebody, hey, bro. This syndrome, it steals your voice, so you, don't, you can't sing anymore. You're just wow. back there just mouthing. Oh, wow. Rolling your eyes. This stupid church, these people. Oh, my gosh. Everyone's so unorganized. I asked last minute for everything. That couldn't be the Lord making it that way for me, you know. But It couldn't be John 3, 8 that the wind blows where it pleases when it wants to do it. You know. It's funny, we can get handed a calendar uh, that's a year in advance planned out, and we go, you're so disorganized. <laughs> when you have this syndrome, you're tired all the time. Because it takes a lot of energy to be, you know what, the thing, that, the thing that's most draining on the planet is to be angry. That's, I mean, it'll knock you out. <laughs> And you either send a lot of texts or no texts. You know what I mean? When you're in this mode, you're like, da, 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 da. your finger's like the flash. <laughs> <laughs> or everything's like, oh, heck no. <laughs> when you have this syndrome, you start tracking who calls you and who does not. How many people call you? You have to actually not call anybody to track how many people are not calling you. It's, funniest, it's the funniest thing ever. The pot always calls the kettle black. Nobody calls me! Uh, look at you. Why? I'm just why? <laughs> you know? I'm like, hello? Lay it out, bro. We stop confessing our sin. We separate ourselves from our brothers and sisters and then charge them with not loving us. Oh, get back. Come on, what the heck? Why are you calling me? All because we forgot that God gave us the greatest Christmas present ever. He gave you Jesus. He gave you Jesus. God gave you the ultimate Christmas present. See, I think we forget that Jesus was an offering. He was a gift. He wasn't laid on the altar and lit on fire. He was nailed to the altar and pierced and beaten. Why did God give you Jesus? Because that's what you asked for all those nights when you were crying. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. See, everybody wants 
a savior. Yeah. It's just many didn't realize that meant he's your Lord. And so God gave you that present. In John chapter 17, we'll keep moving on. God gave you Jesus. He tenderized him with all the beatings. He bled him out with the spear. And he offered him up on a platter for your sins and mine. He gave him to you as a gift. See, why did he give you Jesus, though? He gave you Jesus so that you would have a picture of how to live. Yeah. That's the gift. Yeah. In John 17, verse 6, Jesus explains it himself. He explains why God gave him to you. Chapter 17, verse 6. He replied, well, I'm in Luke. Come on, bro. 17 verse 6. I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me, and they have obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. For I gave them the words you gave me. And they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you. And they believed you sent me. I pray for them. I'm not praying for the world. But for those you have given me, for they are yours. All I have is yours. All you have is mine. And the glory has come to me through them. That is why God gave you Jesus. Come on, Ron. Come on, he gave Jesus everything that was his so that Jesus would in turn give you that everything. Wow. Wow. See, Jesus says, I gave them your word. See, words are powerful but only when they're from God. Oh, yeah. wow. There's many a thing that have been said throughout the history of mankind that are considered powerful. But the least of words that are spoken in the spirit of God are greater than the greatest words ever spoken by any man. Yeah. Remember the whole creation thing? I mean, how'd that whole thing work, right? How'd that whole thing work? There's nothing. And he says, let there be light. Awesome. Simple phrase. Simple phrase. That one phrase repeated more than any other phrase in the history of man. Wow. But how did it work? I mean, when he said, let there be light, what happened? It seems so simple. But if it wasn't the Spirit of God that said it, it would still be dark. Yeah. See, you actually have that Spirit, if you're a baptized disciple of Jesus today, Come on. living inside of you. Yeah. Come on. Come on, and you're going to learn to be so much more fired up about that. Yeah. Because there's nothing greater on the planet than to have God living in you. Yeah. How dare us have the Super Bowl coming and jump up and scream up and down and I know we have the Holy Spirit and be oh, oh. what an abomination to God when we're like that that's why our lives are so tough because we don't know what's in us Nike commercial it is in you you just forgot it's there see Jesus was the embodiment of God's word himself and he offered it on a platter to give it to you yeah. so you'd understand it Amen. so you'd know the power of it I mean think about what you could do wow. yep. 
Most of you have seen Bruce Almighty. You know what you can try and do with it. Whoa. That's what, though we are evil right there. I mean, you think about asking for something versus asking for it in Jesus' name. Right? See, in Jesus' name means you got Jesus' motives, you have his dreams, his goals, his will behind that prayer. You have the refined you refined by Jesus in that prayer when you do it in Jesus' name. Then you can pray that prayer. Let there be enough money in my bank account to pay all my bills. See, you don't have enough faith for that. You don't have enough faith for that. Because you don't know what's living inside of you. Right. And you don't realize yet, if you would all but purify your motives, get Jesus' dream as your dream, have his will as your will, you can pray anything on the planet, and it will happen for you today. I am not preaching prosperity like all these guys that want money. I'm preaching your life being what God made it to be. I mean, think about it. Let my kids obey me. Woo! Yeah! So many of us pray that, we just forgot the, the Jesus part of it. <laughs> then they're running around like crazy. Woo! We're like, ah! That's why I have no, What do you think happened to all the hair I used to have? 18 years, man. Nice. <laughs> then you go, let my wife... Nah, nah she's perfect. I'll just leave that one out. <laughs> let, let, let that one out. You said it. You said it when it's the there you go, I'm the man today. I mean, what are you going to ask for? Let me be thin again. Yeah. Come on, Ronnie. Ronnie and Rob, let's go. <laughs> You're the only guys I know would never be offended if I did that to you, Simon. You got it. <laughs> That's the really cool part about being a disciple. Gosh, we miss out on so much of it. In my name. And I will do it for you. That just makes you have to go reel on back. Okay, what are all my desires? What are all my goals? What are all the things I want to do? Let me figure out if that's what Jesus wants yeah, first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then let me get aligned with Jesus, and now the prayers are on. Now it's on in 2017. And by the way, our theme for 2017 is the best year of your life. That's what's coming in this Super League. <laughs> Amen. I'm glad you like that. John chapter 20, verse 21. John chapter 20, verse 21. Let's read a little bit more about the gift that Jesus gave. See, because God gave you Jesus, but then he gave you the greatest present to affect your life. Verse 21. Again, Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them. And he said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, your sins are not forgiven. You know, there's no qualifiers. Oh, but if you've been baptized, you still make it. That's an all or nothing passage. It's in there several times. That's another lesson, though. The gift. The Holy Spirit. Wow. Nothing is impossible with the spirit that lives in you. Think about who lives in your home with you. What's it like to live with them? <laughs> What's it like to live with a bunch of sinners with you? You know, that's where we all are at the end of the day. I mean, we have good days and we act, we act great and then we have bad days, right? And sometimes it's great. Sometimes it's not. And yet, 
Don't ask me how it works. I just know it does. On the day of your baptism, we're about to see two people baptized. Yeah, we are. Now, next time I say you're saved, you have the Holy Spirit, I want to hear it like that. Every time. See, when you get baptized, you go under some water, right? Now, here's the thing about it. You go under that water, and there isn't saving faith. You come out, and you just got wet. It's just how it works. But when you go under that water, if you have a saving faith, then when, you, then when you're under there, in a spiritual perspective, the water becomes the blood of Jesus. Yeah, yeah, and it yeah. cleanses all of your sins. Yeah, yeah. And you come out totally clean and saved. Is that not incredible? That's what's going to happen for these two today. But that's not the cherry on top. Being saved is not the cherry on top. Because others are lost. The cherry on top is that because you're saved, now you are a clean vessel and you get a new roommate. It's called the Holy Spirit. It's the same spirit that built this earth, that created light, that created land, that saved Jesus, that saved you, that made him walk on water, that changed the world. That is what's living inside of you right now. If you're a true disciple of today, you truly did get the greatest Christmas present ever. Using God's word, Jesus' heart, his will, his motives, boy, it just pays to get to know him better so you can pray like him with his motives. You go, let my kids obey me. Colossians 3.20, in Jesus' name. Let me be thin again. Galatians 5.24, self-control, in Jesus' name. Then you don't say, get my wife perfect. You say, keep my wife perfect. Ephesians 5.22. Then you say, let my husband be a man of God, Ephesians 5.24, in Jesus' name. Once that Holy Spirit lives in you, you're only, you're only limited to your own imagination. You're only limited to your vision, your creativity, on how God made you to make your mark on this planet. Jesus truly gave you the greatest Christmas present ever. He gave you a living example of God's word for you to imitate. And he put the Holy Spirit and he breathed on you. And it smelled good. It was not bad breath. <laughs> Lastly, you can give as many of these presents as you want to others. Go to Romans chapter 10. When you give the present of a relationship with God... You give the greatest thing anyone can give another person. But I want you to think about what you're going to give God for, for Christmas this year. What God wants is you. All of you, not some of you. How much of your time does he want? All of it. How much of your money does he want? All of it. How much of your worship does he want? All of it. He wants you totally engulfed and entrenched with Christ being your life. Not a part of your life, completely your life. He wants faith, hope, love, and he demands obedience. You can choose not to obey. You're free to. You just lose your faith when you do. 
Make Christ your life. You want the best year of your life in 2017? Then make Christ your life and it'll be great. Give him your time, your heart. Honor him with your giving. Honor him with your singing. Honor him with your fellowship with one another. Go home and give a living sermon to your family that they'll never forget that will change their life forever. Give the lost a present, a chance to have what you have. Just realize they need faith to get it. We, we, we highly underestimate the influence that we have in our lives over others when we know what we have living inside of us. You telling me you can't articulate to someone the depths of the gift that God has given you and what he has done in your life and they won't come? Of course they'll come. I don't care what they read on the internet. That all Christians are hypocrites. Every person's a hypocrite. Try and find one that's never been a hypocrite. You find that person, you found the liar. Of course people will come with. You want to be fruitful? Understand what you have, and you will be fruitful. Everything you touch will turn to gold. Everything you do will succeed. Because when you have God with you, you cannot fail. Go to Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. Here is how you give faith. Verse 17. Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message. Yeah. Have you ever talked to somebody and they just didn't get what you were saying? Yeah. And they're just looking at you like, what in the world are you talking about? Yeah. That's what it's like when we share faith a lot. With people. Yeah. I'm, and I'm not talking about inviting, okay? Inviting to church is not sharing your faith unless you tell them your story. Right. Wow. Sharing your faith is sharing the faith you have because of what God has done for you. Hey, you want to come to church with me? That, that does not convey all of that. Right. See, God asks us to share our faith because it helps us know and remember what we have. Right. It's good for us. Yeah, good. And yet he says right here, faith comes from hearing the message. And the message is heard through the word of Christ. Yeah. This is so awesome. That all you have to do is give somebody the message to give them faith. Yeah. And yet the message is found right here. The message is found right here. You just have to read about true disciples becoming true disciples. Right. Yeah. That's, that's it. You just got to be able to get down in God's word and read the passages that show the truth about becoming a real disciple of Jesus. And that person has their opportunity to have what you have. So, that means you can actually give faith to people. I mean, what else could you give them that's better than that? You can't give them the Holy Spirit. You can only give them the opportunity to have it. But you can give faith through your words, through your life, through the way you convey the message. What's a white elephant gift? It's a gift that you've received and then you re-give to someone else at a white elephant party. See, Jesus got everything from God and he had a white elephant party and he gave it to you. What are you going to do with it? Yeah. If, you ever had, if you've never done White Elephant Party with Tracy, you got to do that with Trace. She's the present stealer. She, she instigates the stealing of presents in the White Elephant Parties. It's the, most, it's the funniest thing ever. And yet, and yet, we have that gift from Jesus. And then sometimes we sit there and we see all the other presents people have, all the things Satan gave them. Oh, I want that one. 
Here, take mine. And we just treat like nothing what God gave us. I think about the gifts that I've asked for since I've been a disciple. The things that I've asked for have drastically changed in 23 years. I was a horrific son. I was terrible. We didn't have the best life. My, I was always provided for. My father gave me everything that I ever wanted to have. Um, my mother was always there for me. But there was a lot of abuse. There's a lot of abuse. And um, my father beat my mother regularly. I'd jump in the middle. I'd get it. And um, it was a tough life in that way. Never belittle what somebody goes through. While yours may be worse, theirs is their reality. And the pain is just the same for everybody, what they go through. And, And yet, I remember praying for God to take my dad. And then I remember getting baptized, and it just seemed impossible he would ever come to any kind of relationship with God. I'd ask him to church, and he'd say, I'm going to church with the golf gods. And he'd go golf. And he'd mock my Christianity. My younger sister had studied, was studying the Bible. She's coming to church. She was on the light and darkness study in the teen ministry at that time. And he began to tell her and her mother that I was part of a cult and keep her away from Ronnie's church. So they stopped her from coming, and she never got baptized. And yet, over the years, I've prayed and prayed and prayed for my father. For 19 years, I prayed that my father would come into a right relationship with the truth, that he'd come to grips with the truth. And yes, of course, you pray those, you pray them in Jesus' name. And I remember hearing constantly the barrage of responses that that was just an impossible prayer. And yet in 2011, after 19 years of praying, my father got to the place where he was suicidal and he uh, drove himself from Los Angeles to Portland, where we were at. And he studied the Bible and he got baptized. And it is very special having James and Jennifer here. Uh, He was part of those studies with my father. And yet, uh, and then, you know, he walked away in the white elephant gift. He gave his gift back for a girlfriend. See, Christ demands obedience. The area where you don't obey is what will take you out. When you disobey consistently, you're handing God's gift back is what you're doing. But you know that I, I prayed for all 17 years of my oldest son's life, Devin. And those of you who know, I said, no, that. Um, he actually contracted a bacterial infection in his bloodstream when he was a year old and got uh, the beginnings of meningitis, and it did brain damage. And so he's been challenged his whole life. And um, he just met with a therapist last week, and they were talking about how he'll never be able to get a job, and he'll never be able to support himself. And man, have I prayed for that to not be the case. And then, you know, three days ago, Chris Anderson sends a text message out that his job is hiring. And my son called, and he went down there, and he got his first job. (laughs) Doggone if that kid hasn't woken me up like four or five times throughout every night since. (laughs) It's like, Dad, I'm so proud of myself. I'm so proud of you, too. (laughs) And, you know, I prayed for him to know the truth. And in April of this year, he was baptized. And, you know, I learned something, though, that with with my father and with my son, I didn't really pray that they would just get, I only prayed that they would just get salvation. I didn't really pray about their convictions about obedience, which I know is what helps us not give our gift back. And they walked away. And yet I know 
that it's not over until death. That's right. And so I have hope. Yeah. And I have conviction. And I continue to pray every day for them. And I prayed for 16 years straight for my younger son, Dylan. And uh, I'm so proud of my son, Dylan, as well. He's become a, he's become a powerful young disciple. And uh, he's, he's requested to go to other churches more than I am, in fact. <laughs> These days, it's pretty funny. But he's counseling different campus kids and singles. And I mean, he's just going to get arrogant if he doesn't watch it. Go talk to Kristen and learn from her how to repent of that. But God will give you all that you desire if you ask in his name and you let your heart be molded into his, into his heart as you pray these things. Well, today, this Christmas, understand that God gave you the greatest present he could ever have given you. He gave you his son as an offering for you. Then his son turned around and gave you the greatest gift, the example of how to live. He gave you God's word in flesh and blood, and he put the Holy Spirit for you to have for the rest of your life. Since God and Jesus have given you the world's greatest gifts, Today, go out to be a living example for this world. Breathe life through what you say into this lost world. And today, for the holidays, give them the world's greatest gifts. I love you all. Have an incredible afternoon.